sabay-sabay natin alamin ang mga kaganapan na nangyayari sa Yo, what's up mga kaibigan? This is Aituki po again. Ngayon nandito naman ulit tayo sa channel ni Pinas News Insider. Dito naman ulit tayo magbibigay ng komento at reaksyon. Kaya samahan nyo ko guys. Let's go! Sige pa nating pangunahing mga balita na nawaga naman si Pangulong Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. sa mga nagsusulong na ihiwalay ang Mindanao sa ibang parte ng Pilipinas. Natigilan na ang mga kanilang ginagawang panawagan. Siniguro ng Pangulo na mabibigwang panawagan na ito dahil nakaangla ito sa maling basehan at taliwa sa itinatakda ng ating konstitusyon. Ayon sa Pangulo, ang mga lider na anya sa Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao ang tumatanggi sa proposal na paghihiwalay nga ng naturang lugar. Maging, oh, maging ang iba pang mga political leaders sa region ay tutol rin sa nasabing panawagan. Pagbibigay din ng Pangulo, mayroon ng tunay, epektibo at gumaga ng local autonomy sa ating bansa, lalo na sa bahagi ng Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. Ito ay hindi nang hindi nakakompriso ang national integrity ng ating bansa. Sabi pa ng Pangulo, ang paghihiwalay sa Mindanao ay hindi bagong Pilipinas sa hinihubog ng Marcos Administration, lalo't pagkakawasak-wasak lamang ang isinusulong ng mga panawagang ito. Ang konstitusyon niya ay nananawagan ng pagkakaisa at pagiging undivided ng ating bansa. At walang anumang nilalaman ng konstitusyon sa pumapayag na paghihiwalay ng anumang bahagi ng Pilipinas. Kaugnay niyan, pakinggan natin ang bahagi ng pahayag ni Pangulong Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. For it is my sworn duty as elected president to preserve and defend the constitution and also to ensure that laws, especially the fundamental law of the land, are faithfully executed. And we must allow this healthy and democratic debate to rage on, engaging and informing the minds of our citizens especially since the socio-economic development of our country is directly involved. Inyong napakinggan ang bahagi ng pahayag ni Pangulong Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Sa pagpapatuloy ng ating mainit na balita sa oras na ito, abaya naging agaw pansin at mistulang natuldukan ng ilang isyu ng pangunahan ni Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos Jr. at Vice President Sara Duterte ang pamahagi ng mga titulo ng lupa sa mga agrarian reform beneficiaries habang tinutugunan ang mga pangailangan ng Davawenyo na nasa lantan ng mga pagbaha sa naturang lugar. Magkasamang lumabas sa intablado ang mga opisyal para yan sa region-wide distribution of e-titles na pinangunahan ni Department of Agrarian Reform Secretary Conrado M. Estrella III. Mismong pinamunuan ni Pangulong Marcos ang buong sangay ng gobyerno at pribadong sektor para palawigin ang mga suportang serbisyo ang uh, mga bagong may-ari nga ng lupa at nakipagsanig pwersa kay Vice President Sara Duterte para pakilusin ang mga ari-arian ng gobyerno para makapagpadala ng mga pangunahing relief goods sa mga biktima ng baha sa may bahagi ng Davao de Oro at Davao del Norte. Matapos ipamahagi ang naturang electronic titles o e-titles sa 2,500 at 2,500 na agrarian beneficiaries mula sa alim na lalawigan ng Davao Region, binigyan din ni Pangulong Marcos Jr. kung bakit dinala niya ang ilang kalihim ng iba't ibang ahensya na sina Agriculture Secretary Francisco Q. Laurel Jr., Department of Interior and Local Government Secretary Benhor Abalos, Department of Social Welfare and Development Secretary Rex Gachalian, Department of National Defense Secretary Gibo Tudoro, at Armed Forces of the Philippines Chief Romeo Browner Jr. Pinuri ni Pangulong Marcos si Secretary Estrella at kukunan ng Department of Agrarian Reform sa pagpapabilis ng pamahagi ng electronic titles. Binanggit ng punong ekotibo ng mahigit 90,000 na e-titles ang naipamahagi sa loob ng 1.5 na taon ng kanyang termino. Nice naman ang punong ekotibo na makumpleto ng naturang ahensya ang pamahagi sa pagtatapos ng kanyang termino. Nagpasalamat naman si Vice President sa Pangulo, si Vice President Sara Duterte sa Pangulong Marcos sa lahat ng suportang ipinaabot sa mga dabawenyo, lalo na sa mga magsasakang beneficiaryo ng agraryo. Narito ang naging bahagi ng pahayag ni Department of Agrarian Reform Secretary Conrado M. Estrelli III. Ako ay uh, natutuwa at uh, dito sa bagong Pilipinas, napakalagi po ng ating pag-asa. Bakit po? Nakita ninyo, dito sa Dabao Region, nandito po ang ating mahal na Pangulo. Nandito po ang ating Vice President. At kami po mga membro ng Kabinete, tayong lahat, sama-sama tayo nang sa ganun, lumipad 
ang ating bayan. Sama-sama tayo para umunlad ang buhay ng mga agrarian reform beneficiaries at lahat ng magsasaka sa ating bansa. Okay, latest update muna tayo. So, ang ating presidente at vice president ay nasa Davao region. Good job! No? So, sana mas marami pang Diba? Mas marami pang proyekto at pagsasamahan no? si President BBM and VP Inday Sara, lalo na pagdating sa Mindanao. It's good to know, it's good to know mga Lods. Buti na lang. Ito yung BBM na gusto namin, di ba? So, nabigay na naman sila ng lupa no, sa um, mga kababayan natin no, sa Davao region. And sana mga lods, no, um, sana opportunity na rin na nasa Davao si PBBM. Sana opportunity na rin yan no, para mas mag-usap no, sila former president uh, Tatay Digong. No, at para maayos na rin yung kanilang hidwaan at wala nang batuhan ng kung ano-ano pa. And sana, 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 no, matigil na yung ambisyon at pinaggagawa ni Romualdez. Kasi yun lang naman ang rason bakit nagkakanda gulo-gulo tayong lahat eh. ba diba? Kasi may mga ambisyon kasi na <coughs> dapat hindi muna. ba diba? At dapat unahin muna ang bayan natin. And sana madalaw din ni President BBM yung uh, mga naapektuhan ng kalamidad no sa Davao region. Yon malaking good news para sa mga taga Mindanao. Nagsimula na ang pre-construction activities ng Department of Transportation para sa Mindanao Railway Project sa Davao City, Digo, sa Tagum sa kabila ng paghahanap ng mapagkukunan ng pondo. Ayon kay Transportation Secretary Jaime Bautista, kasalukuyan silang naghahanap ngayon ng alternatibong mapagkukunan ng pondo kabilang official development assistance mula sa mga foreign government at international financial institutions. Sisimula ng DOTR ang Phase 1 ng Mindanao Railway Project na may habang 100.2 kilometers na may walong istasyon at may tinatayang project cost na abot sa 81.6 billion pesos. Nagsimula na rin ang ahensya sa pagbili ng lupa, pati na rin ang target alignment, at inukoy na rin ang mga resettlement site para sa mga mapapalis sa mga residente. Piyembre ng nakarang taon, ang magpadala ng liham si Roy Finance Secretary Benjamin Jokno kay Chinese Ambassador to the Philippines Wang Zilian na hindi na itutuloy yung Pilipinas ang pag-utang nito para punduhan ang proyekto. Lain ng Mindanao Railway Project na pag-ugnayin ang buong isa ng Mindanao. Sa oras na matapos ang proyekto, inaasa namang makakapagservisyo ito sa halos isang daan at dalawampu't dalawang lipong pasahero kada araw. Mapabawasan ito ang oras ng biyahe sa pagitan ng Tagum City at Digo City mula tatlong oras hanggang isang oras na lamang. Ayan, no? So buti na lang ay itutuloy na ang railway project dito sa Mindanao. Although may konting aberya pagdating sa negosasyon between China and Philippines kasi before, ang China sana ang magpupondo no, ng uh, railway project dito sa Mindanao. No, which is may konting, di ba, may konting problem lang. And good thing right now, narinig natin na itutuloy pa rin siya at sisimula na. Ito lang mga lods ang maganda, no? yung equally distributed and at the same time equal, no? Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. Sa pagdat pagdating sa infrastructures, no? sa development, sa innovations, no? sana talaga hindi mahuhuli ang Mindanao. Di ba yun lang naman yung inaaray natin dito eh. Diba, yung mga projects dito, innovations dito, infrastructures dito, diba, yung mga quality projects, yun lang naman, no? yun lang naman ang 
gusto rin namin mangyari dito sa Mindanao. Now, which is nangyayari na sa Cebu and lalo na sa, sa Visayas at nangyayari na rin sa Luzon. Kaya it's a good news for us no, na ipagpapatuloy ang railway uh, project dito sa Mindanao. Let us direct our attention on screen for a short audio-visual presentation and take a stroll down memory lane as we trail through the DOTR's history track, its vision, mission, and purpose. The Department of Transportation and the country's transport systems continue to evolve over the decades since it was established in 1899. Over the past 125 years, the Department of Transportation continues to serve as the government's primary transport policy, planning, coordinating, and implementing agency in the promotion, development, and regulation of dependable and coordinated transport networks. Under President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., the DOTR has been relentless in improving the country's public transport system. Transformation of the country's transport system is in full swing. My order to the Department of Transportation or DOTR is really very simple. Full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. In his first State of the Nation address, President Marcus directed the Department of Transportation. Full speed ahead. In compliance, the department set the goal of elevating the country's transport systems to global standards. As one of the lead agencies implementing the Build Better More Infrastructure Development Program of the Marcus Administration, the Department of Transportation and its attached agencies is fast-tracking the completion of projects in the aviation, maritime, railways, and road sectors. In the aviation sector, the DOTR launched the rehabilitation and modernization of various airports, starting with a public-private partnership of the operations and maintenance of the Ninoy Aquino International Airport, improvements at Clark International Airport, ongoing land development works for the construction of the new Manila International Airport in Bulacan, and PPP of the operations and maintenance of the Lagindingan Airport and Bohol Panglao International Airport, construction of Greenfield Airport projects such as the Bukidnon Airport, New Dumaguete Airport, New Zamboanga Airport, General Santos, Virac, Puerto Princesa, Ormoc, Telbayog, Cataraman, Butuan, Camiguin, Tacloban, Davao International Airport, and several more airports for development. Meanwhile, major lifts have been achieved in the railway sector. Construction is in full swing for the North-South Commuter Railway, LRT-1 Cavite Extension, MRT-7, and the Metro Manila Subway. Upcoming rail projects for implementation soon include MRT-4, South Long Haul Railway, Mindanao Railway Phase 1, Subic Lark Railway, among others. Embedded in the massive railway system development is the development and improvement of competencies of human resources through the Philippine Railways Institute. Under the road sector, the DOTR is continuously implementing the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program to reform and improve the public transport operations in the country, complemented by the Service Contracting Program and the Fuel Subsidy Program. The DOTR is also promoting the use of active transportation through the establishment of bike infrastructures nationwide. Aside from this, the sector will also build the EDSA Greenways project to conveniently connect MRT3 to other modes of road transport using elevated and eco-friendly walkways along selected segments of EDSA. The agency's road sector is also improving land transport in Metro Manila's R3 with the EDSA busway, in Cebu City with the Cebu Bus Rapid Transit, and in Davao City with the Davao Public Transportation Modernization Project. The OTR's maritime sector, composed of the Philippine Coast Guard, Maritime Industry Authority, Philippine Ports Authority, and the Cebu Port Authority have been relentless in upgrading numerous seaports and ensuring the coastal cities and communities are competitive for trade, investment, and tourism. This transport infrastructure initiatives created an overarching spectrum of opportunities for the country's economic development by addressing transport bottlenecks and gaps. The Department of Transportation has been consistent with its trust and long-term outlook by investing in mobility and connectivity across the archipelago. Secretary Jaime J. Bautista remains laser-focused on the goal. Provide comfortable, accessible, safe, sustainable, and affordable travel experience for all. Juncture, may we call on the Vice President of the Republic of the Philippines and Concurrent Education Secretary Honorable Sara Z. Duterte to introduce our keynote speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. Maraming salamat sa ating uh, pangalawang pangulo at kalihim ng Department of Education, uh, Sara Duterte, for your kind introduction. Oh, please, uh, please take your seat. The lead agency uh, in this uh, very forward-looking and progressive project, the trans our Transportation Secretary, Secretary Jimmy Bautista. Oh. And uh, 
quietly sitting here on the end is, uh, but the very playing a very important role is uh, Secretary of the Department of Budget and Management, uh, Secretary Mina Sanandama. Meron fans club dito ah. The uh, members of the cabinet who are here today, uh, we have uh, we have come because we have uh, uh, gone to several, we have made several stops. Uh, the first of which was the uh, uh, was the Apo Agua, the uh, big uh, water purification project uh, that we just inaugurated, um, and that is. Uh, um, that is a very another very important development for the for Davao and uh, the city in particular and Davao in general. And uh, the reason we brought the uh, we asked the cabinet uh, secretaries to join us is because this exemplifies the approach that we have taken to the challenges that we face and the initiatives that we would like to pursue. In that uh, we are using what we have referred to as a whole of government approach, because even a even a project that is very specific to the DOTR, nonetheless requires support from many of the other agencies of government, and it is only this way that we are able to maximize the effect that people will feel uh, when it comes to the ground level. Of course, very much in very very much as a partner also of a. Of that are our private sector partners uh, because we have now uh, we now have put front and center together with the government the private sector as being a necessary part of the development of the Philippines in the different sectors that we are uh, hoping to uh, improve the my fellow workers in government uh, all the distinguished guests here today ladies and gentlemen good afternoon today we launch a project that will not only move people and hardworking people around with ease, but to transport their progressive city to a modern future with certainty. The words that describe this project, safe, reliable, and efficient, are in fact the same traits all Filipinos aspire to see in the communities that they live in. This project is more than bringing people and their products to their destinations safe and sound. It should be rightly viewed as a major vehicle that will bring us to a better tomorrow. This is more than just a ceremonial signing for the Civil Works of Contracts for the Davao Public Transport Modernization Project, or the DPTMP. It is a strong reaffirmation of our commitment to develop the Davao region. It is a demonstration of our resolve to deliver what people in all regions deserve, a mass transportation system that can move commuters and commerce efficiently. There is no better, there is no better place than this city to renew the pledge that no, there is no better time than today, the 125th anniversary of the founding of the Department of Transportation. The DOTR has a proud heritage, being gifted with the DNA to stand at the forefront of development, to surge forward to frontiers of innovation. In 1899, the first DOTR secretary, Maximo Paterno, rode a train to the inauguration of the first Philippine Republic in Manolos, Bulacan, on the same carriages that ferried our heroes to their places of honor. Those trains were the official carriers of the revolution. The railways we are building today are inspired by the same vision that they held, that a mass transport system is essential to propelling our nation to progress. For the past one and a quarter century, the DOTR has built a network which has linked our islands, has eased mobility, democratized travel, fostered prosperity, and connected our people with stronger ties. In an archipelago of 7,000 plus islands and many diverse cultures, the DOTR supplied the adhesive towards national unity. The DPTMP is envisioned in the same mode of breaking barriers, enhancing accessibility, and boosting productivity. The DPTMP will field 400 articulated battery electric buses and more than 500 diesel buses with 29 interconnected routes around the locality. So once completed, this is certainly, as they call it, a game changer. This project will become the template for public transport systems in other cities in our country. As a mass transport system, this people mover will provide faster more com and more comfortable commutes whilst this decongesting streets filled with private vehicles and improve road traffic. As an affordable and clean mode of transport, it will neither burn a hole in the pockets of our people nor a bigger one in our ozone layer. As a catalyst for lifestyle change, it shows by example that there are feasible alternatives to commuting by private vehicles, that these can be left behind at home without having to be late for work, for school, or for whatever you need to do uh, around and about your, the places that you live. This is not a project of the DOTR alone. Its success does not entirely hinge on the agency's own, only the agency's own capacity. In whatever era, 
Great undertakings like these are never solo performances. To succeed, it requires the support of the local government, the informed consent of the people, and the backing of parties who will help us bankroll this dream. As to the first, I would like to express my deepest appreciation to our local leaders for fully backing this project. Dagang salamat. As a matter of fact, this project was first envisioned in the time when it was under the auspices of Mayor Sara Duterte. As to the second, let me assure you that we treat people as joint venture partner, actively soliciting as much of their opinion and their views as possible to accommodate their sentiments into this and every other project. Our call for equitability and inclusivity covers those who will be temporarily inconvenienced by the project. On that note, we assure you that we will attend to the needs of those who will be affected during its construction. As to the third, I would like to express our gratitude to the people of the Asian Development Bank for believing in investing in our vision. Maraming maraming salamat po. And I must point out that this is not the only large-scale program uh, project that uh, we are undertaking together with uh, assistance from the ADB and from other uh, financing institutions that, uh, that have come to help the Philippines. So their support will be repaid with work that does not scrimp on the budget, nor cut corners on workmanship, nor block feedback, nor disregard deadlines. My instructions concerning projects across the board all over the country are very clear. Deliver on time, on spec, and on budget. There is another instruction to all agencies that I would need to have fully complied with, of which the recent flooding in Mindanao has emphatically shown. The infrastructure we are building must not only wipe out the arrears of the past, but must respond to the needs of the present and anticipate circumstances in the future. We must build while bearing in mind the worst the future will bring, of the earth getting hotter, getting wetter, and not on outdated assumptions that no longer apply. We cannot build climate-resistant infrastructure for our children based on the rainfall and temperature records during the, our parents' time. The same sensitivity to emerging trends and best practices should define our pivot to commuter and commuter-friendly transit systems. And that is why I'm ordering the Secretary of Transportation, the Secretary of Finance, to work in tandem to explore financing sources for the 103-kilometer Tagum Davao Digos Railway. <laughs> Thus far, this, this ambitious project has been stalled by lack of funding. So let us go and hunt for the right funding engine that will pull this project to the finish line. I have, believe, I have been briefed that financing railway models can be creatively packaged in a hybrid way, with each component of the project undertaken, underwritten by different stakeholders. Civil works, for instance, can be tendered to private investors. Rolling stock can be shouldered by official development assistance or vice versa. There are some examples of ways we can explore different modes of financing to accelerate delivery. Of course, right-of-way is a deliverable entrusted to the government. I have mentioned these to illustrate one cardinal rule in transportation management of always being in the driver's seat of innovation. So when it comes to mobility, not all kinds of modernization requires high-tech and deep pockets, such as walkable pedestrian lanes, to give us an example. In the meantime, let us move at full speed in modernizing our airports, railways, seaports, roads, transportation hubs, and active mobility structures. This is the mission that DOTR has ahead of it. This is our ticket to a brighter future. This is an opportunity we should not miss on our way to a bagong Pilipinas. At yun nga po mga kaibigan, dito po nagtatapos ang ating reaction video. Muli ako po si I2K ng Sundalo ng Dunggalo. Maraming maraming salamat sa patuloy na pagsuporta. Yeah, peace out.